All right, it is redemption day for me and for Johnny. I've got a bunch of extra fuel. He's finally thought out enough to rejoin the 98.6 club. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get this unloaded, head back up the mountain and go try to get his rig out. Uh, today's Wednesday, it was Saturday. So we went and got him out, so it's been sitting up there for a four while. to four days now. But I got sick, he was cold. I'm feeling better now. We got a new power steering pump and a power steering cooler put on this. I'm gonna bring 10 extra gallons of fuel with me now that I know how bad a fuel mileage it gets. Got another five gallons of diesel for his rig. And hopefully this trip goes better than the last. Uh, we're gonna get this unloaded here because there's a big hill right there. The only problem is this intersection where I thought I'd be able to turn around and all that isn't plowed. So we're gonna unload this, try to turn around right here, probably get stuck and then use this to pull out that. That's the plan so far. Okay, so I got the Jeep unloaded and I used it to kind of track a path through the snowbank here and now we'll see how this goes. You got it. I like your confidence. <laughs> Piece of cake. I thought you had it. A little deeper than we thought. So, 10,000 pound truck and a 3,500 pound trailer pulled out with a 4,500 pound Jeep. Good to go. All right, got the truck parked. That's clear enough of the road. Got the Jeep loaded up. We've got five more gallons of fuel for Johnny's rig, 10 spare gallons for my rig, even though we're going in from a different direction that should be about half the distance. But lessons learned, still bringing extra fuel. All right, so we're a couple miles from the truck and uh, the plowed road takes off to the right here. We gotta head out to the left here, which is back into the powder. So in the four days that this thing's been out here, um, we've had a whole bunch of rain in town. It's been kind of warmer mix of rain and snow. What we didn't know is what it did up here in the in the woods being higher elevation did it get that warm rainy stuff up here also or snow and it looks like it snowed <laughs> all right so we're in probably a few feet of snow now i'm sinking down to about the top of the tracks in a lot of places as you can see and we're still probably a foot or so of snow above the road, so probably a few feet deep. And about another 10 miles to go. <laughs> Getting out of here is gonna be interesting. So to answer some questions and comments I got from the previous video, the one being, why don't you carry extra fuel? That's so dumb. Well, it's because I've never needed extra fuel. Uh, I've never even burned half a tank in this Jeep on recoveries. I have an oversized tank in this Jeep. It's actually a 12 gallon oversized tank. So everyone's saying you should carry two jerry cans. Well, I'm actually carrying a little more than two jerry cans just by default. And like I said, I've never even burned half a tank on a recovery.
clearly I was mistaken about how much fuel these tracks actually burn in the snow. So now I do have two jerry cans on the roof plus the extra 12 gallon tank. So we should be good now. Uh, the other one, you need one of the spot locator beacons. I have one. So if, if something happens where there's no service, I do have satellite communication. Uh, I do have survival gear. I do have propane heater in here. We could have had heat. We were sitting waiting, but uh, it wasn't necessary yet. And you don't want to use up your survival supplies until they're necessary. So I do have all the survival supplies. I do have extra fuel by default, but now I carry more extra fuel. Uh, do have satellite communication. Do have most everything I should need other than enough fuel on that one trip. But like I said, I've never gone that far before on track, so learning experience. Oh, and the point that people made of why don't I bring a second vehicle with me so that I'm not out alone in this one. Yeah, I'd, I'd really love to do that. That would be super ideal and would make me very happy and feel more comfortable. But what second vehicle? Which one is gonna follow this one around? And who has it? And who has it that is available to just come out with me whenever, at any time, at all hours of the day at the drop of a hat? That's the problem. I'm an owner operator, it's just me. The, I'm the whole company, so I don't have anyone else to just have go out with me at any time with a, cap a vehicle as capable as this one. So that would be super ideal, but it's just not possible most of the time. What did you learn from this experience? Well, a whole lot. Never go out by yourself. Especially if you don't know where you're getting into. Always keep survival supplies because I got wet and cold. I had to take off my clothes and that was no good. And also, thank God I found out this guy didn't exist. <laughs> Not, not the way you want to find out I exist, but luckily we got him out of there. Uh, he did the very smart thing and stayed with his vehicle, which a lot of people will try to hike out or hike away from it or something like that and stay with your vehicle. Uh, it is so much easier to find a vehicle in the woods than a person. So that was the very smart call and I know like you think that very clearly now sitting warm and dry but once hypothermia sets in and you're in a bad situation you might start making decisions you would normally make but stay with your vehicle please it makes finding you way way easier but this trip we should be fairly set like we got a long way to go it's gonna be tough getting his route back out now that we've got another couple feet of snow out here since that night but we'll see how it goes
So I have a friend with a snow cat. I really wish he was here right now. Okay, so we're running into a small issue. The snow, we're in deep, deep, and it's a super wet, heavy snow, so it's packing in here so freaking tight, like, that you can see it's lifting the track off the uh, sprocket, and then the sprocket's starting to slip, so I've been chipping away like crazy with the shovel, like I have to literally like chip it out of there. It's like packed in hard as ice, so. Yeah, it's lifting the track off the sprocket, and then the sprocket starts slipping, which isn't good, so we're gonna chip both of the fronts, the fronts are the ones doing it, but the fronts are the ones plowing. You can see how deep we actually are. We're, we're almost top of the tracks deep here, and you can see that one, like, there's so much snow caked in there, and it's so hard, hard packed, because this is wet. It's like borderline snow and raining right now, which is just making the snow horrible. And it's all plowing in there and just lifting the track up, so. I'm gonna chip it all out of there, and then we're gonna make some decisions, because we're still, seven miles away there's a whole lot of elevation gain here it snowed a whole lot in the last few days up here so this might not be such a good idea so i just pulled this chunk out so it's jammed up in there this is that's how hard it's getting in there and packing up because it's so wet with this kind of half rain we're getting and it's like i can't even dig it out of there so we're gonna try to get as much as we can out and probably probably turn around. I said, yes, I would love a second vehicle to come out here too. I don't have one, so it's snowing right now. We got a whole lot of elevation to gain. This is only gonna get worse. And I think the safe, safe move is to try to clean these tracks out and head back down. Not what we want to do, but we don't need to get stranded out here again. Yeah, I mean, you're diff dragging, so. Jesus. Wow. That's, uh, that's intense. So what's happening is this snow is so wet, because it's like borderline raining too, that where it comes and pushes up off the axle, it's piling up from the inside and it's lifting the inside of the track off the sprockets and trying to push it over and if we jump the track off the sprocket we're screwed so as much as i don't want to turn around we're getting the hell out of here we got to get out of here so well we got seven eight miles back to the truck which is why we're turning around because i don't want to hike that far by myself just too risky so unfortunately we have to turn back sorry Rescue mission fail part two. Yeah, <laughs> back to back fails. All right, we're back to the plowed road. We just gotta get through the one last snow bank here. And we're back. Still got like five miles to the truck, but we're back to plowed road. All right, we got the Jeep back and on the trailer. You see how just wet and slushy it is. Now down here it's not raining, but up there it was like rain snowy on us pretty good. As we go higher, we should have just got snow snow, but that rainy wet coming in just made that snow pack. What it was doing was packing right in here, and then it was lifting on the inside of the track like this and trying to push them, the two front tracks, off the side like that, which would have been a big issue. So we stopped and shoveled them out a couple times and it's getting worse and worse and being by ourselves with no other vehicle 
kind of a little sketchy to keep going. So it was also meant getting his vehicle out of there once we got to it was going to be borderline impossible anyway. So safest thing to do was just turn and head back. We only made it about halfway. We still had another seven, eight miles to go. So and a lot of elevation gain. So so safe call was to turn back. Uh, I know a guy over in the valley, Bud Nixon, he's got a snow cat. Maybe we'll talk to him, see if he wants to come out and play in this. Uh, if you want to see some super cool snow cat and stuff, go check out Bud Nixon. Crazy Russian guy who does like awesome stuff camping and snow catting. But for now, got it loaded up. Back to back fail. That's going to be it for this one. So until we come up with another plan. So see you guys next time.